Jesus suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested and falsely sentenced to death. He was beaten and whipped, a crown made of thorns pressed into his head. Bearing the cross, he stumbled and staggered up the hill to Golgotha. Each step of the journey getting worse, spit on, cursed, and mocked. But Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket, our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. God hears you and he is answering your prayer. The love of God is being poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Oh, pause. All right. Hey, guys, how y'all doing? Miss, let's see here. Miss, <clears throat> Miss, Miss Jones. I, I appreciate it. Miss you guys, too. Miss Leanne. Look, look, guys, I can click buttons now. Miss Kitty. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm trying out a new software. It was uh, StreamYard, as you can see in that top left corner or right corner. Excuse me. Uh uh, I didn't know. Uh, I've never used this before. I was like, oh, I'm just going to click and uh, hit go live and see if it works, if it uploads to YouTube or not. I don't know. We'll find out. Hello, Miss Donna. Hello, T. Don. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, people. Hello. All right. So um, I'm by myself tonight. Uh, at first, I was like, Oh, I don't have anybody to go on with. I'm not going to go on. It'll be another month before I, <laughs> I do a live or do something. Um, uh, how, how does it look to you guys? How does it sound? Does it sound okay? I want to make sure that you guys, I guess you'll have to hear something. All right. Just want to make sure. Everybody's good, uh, Donna. Everybody's already is turning three this, uh, this Christmas. Uh, that's unbelievable. We had a uh, we had a scare for the first time. It was the first time I ever had a, a dad scare. Uh, she was climbing on the dresser when I was like, my wife was right there, but I was at work. She was climbing on our dresser, like she likes to open up the bottom drawers and sit in them. And the dresser fell on her. Anyway, my wife picked it up, threw it off, and then she she was like ran to the wall. When I got home, you know, I wanted it. She was like in shock, kind of, but um, she uh, she was like a little like I thought her neck was hurt, so I took her to the doctor, and she was all good. She was just in shock. But man, when she didn't like, she was moving her neck funny. I was, I was like, oh, this dad thing's hard. I was like, all right, that's uh, now I'm bolting everything to the walls. So uh, I'm learning. I should have did that to begin with. Oh, Kimberly, uh, James, hey brother, uh, I know you're gonna have fun singing karaoke tonight. I know you won't be here, but I'm glad you stopped by. Go have fun. 
All right. Um, yeah, she is okay. That's good. Um, so tonight, um, I wanted to do something. I just been, I've been watching a lot of things uh, pop up, and it's it's going to tie in some differences in the gospels. It'll be like another one of those teaching ones. But I wanted to just touch on uh, a lot of things that are popping up that people ask questions about the Marian dogmas and things that uh, you'll see in Catholic Catholicism what they preach, and not even that in Orthodox circles and. Um, uh, a lot of emphasis is being put on put on Mary, and as we, as you guys know, as we get closer to the times, uh, right, bad doctrine will come out and come up and up and up, or it'll get mixed in. Uh, but some of these things, I just can't believe that uh, I can't believe that are taught, or people would believe it. So I was like, well, let's do a Bible study on it. Let's dig into the Word, see what the Word says about uh, Mary, the mother of uh, mother of Jesus, right? And uh, I don't know if y'all heard this or, you know, if y'all heard about the Marian dogmas. Uh, there's several of them, but there's four main ones. And uh, let me just go ahead and uh, get this out of the way and uh, we'll just keep Esort up. But one of the dogmas is uh, – pop it up. Y'all can't see it. It's called uh, – It's she's the mother of God. And it's um, – she's they call her the Theo, Theotokos, Theotokos, right? Uh, and it's like this uh, means God bearer, but the way that it's being talked about, it's it lifts her up as if she is like the mother of God, like the God bearer. In other words, like she's deity. Or, and then inside this uh, mother of God, that she was born without sin as well. So people are believing that she is born without sin. Um, and we know there's only one who knew no sin. Right, but they're elevating Mary to a position of deity, and that she is the mother of God. And I, I say it like that for a reason. Like the, like uh, she could almost be the fourth person of the Trinity or outside of it, but you know, equal, right? Because as you know, like uh, in Catholicism, they believe that uh, Mary can also forgive your sins, like, and she can make intercession for you, um, which. We're just going to go through some scriptures today and just look at things and just see what the Bible says and see how, uh, you know, we should – anybody that believes uh, these kind of uh, things, and they, they believe it's essential to your salvation too. Like you have to, you have to believe this, but if you believe these things, does that teach an, a different gospel and a different Christ? And that's what we're going to look at. So uh, – and they also teach her perpetual virginity. In other words, when she had Jesus, right, she was a, vir she was a, a virgin. But then after she had Jesus, she stayed a virgin as well. Then they, uh, you know, teach the immaculate conception, which is, um, you know, she was born without sin again. Uh, and then they, uh, they teach the last, final one, one of the fourth dogmas, and they will literally say that um, if you don't believe these, you're anathema. So uh, they believe that uh, she, like where Jesus had the ascension to heaven, that she was, it's called the assumption, she was assumed up into heaven. Right, she had no death, or uh, or if she did die, she rose again um, uh, bodily. But we all believe that, you know, Mary would be in heaven spiritually, right? Because all those, you know, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Um, but let's just jump into some of this, and I just, you know, I just wanted to teach on this, and just it ties into some cool things and the differences in the Gospels, and uh, I just wanted to do, uh, I don't know, a short video on this, and have other stuff I want to talk on, uh, and I'll touch on some rapture stuff too. Uh, uh, with some things I still think uh, I want to show, which is pretty cool. Um, but let's look at this. Let's look at um, just the mother of God and uh, G Mary, the mother of Jesus, right? And then um, immaculate conception or, you know, somebody that knew no sin, like she wasn't any sin. But let's just see what the – let's see what – and they go to Luke 1, and they say Luke 1 teaches that she was a perpetual version and that, you know, she knew no sin. Uh, which I, I don't get that anywhere, but let, let's just read and find out what um, what Luke 1 says. Let me get down to the birth of Jesus. So Luke 1, 26, and uh, it says uh, – let me just jump down to Luke 27, 1, uh, 127. To a virgin spouse, to a man whose name was Joseph of the ho house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, and the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. So they look at this verse right here, and they um,
Can y'all see still or no? Yay, nay. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Donna says yes, yay. All right, this, like I said, I'm using StreamYard. I, I've never used this. This is uh, this is uploading supposedly directly to YouTube. All right. Um, well, I don't know what I was talking about. Um, that's that's why I like to do uh, <laughs> recordings to just throw it on when I do a teaching. But all right. So, um, what was the last thing I was saying to you guys that you guys heard? I had to do it that way. Or I might have to let one of y'all come in here. That way y'all could say something if it goes out again. All right, Luke 1. Um, all right, we're in Luke. All right, that's weird. I was like, I was on a roll there for a second, I thought. Um, <laughs> all right, so Luke 1, uh, Luke 1, 128. I don't know what we heard. So, and the angel came in, uh, Mary. They didn't hear the last three minutes. All right, let's see here. Uh, I was talking about... Um, uh, let me just let me just restart. Let me try to get this back up. Um, I had scriptures ready to go there. So let me go back to Luke 128, and I'm gonna try to pay attention to the chat the way that happens again. I don't mess it up, um, or I'll never use Streamyard again. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So the angel came into unto her and said, uh, "Hail thou, thou that are highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women." Now I was saying right here. Um, you see a lot of things, which is, uh, you know, kind of giving Mary favor and blessing, right? Because the angel of the Lord is telling the angel, excuse me, Gabriel is telling this to Mary, right? Obviously, we know it's not the uh, angel of the Lord because it's going to angel Lord's going to be in her because that's Jesus, right? But we see this. This is where you see things pop up in the Catholic Church uh, of these dogmas start to pop out because th that prayer, right? You know, blessed are thou amongst women, blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. You know, I was born, a, I was born into a Catholic family, right? And kind of went, went to, Catholic Church, the communion, all that, but never stuck. Praise Jesus. And then became a Christian and then became born again four or five years ago now. Um, but this is this verse right here, one of them, where they 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 dwarf it, right? So and and you don't see these teachings, this or a lot of these dogmas comes, you don't see these teachings from anywhere in Jesus or the Bible, right? Uh any of the Marian dogmas I was explaining earlier. Uh until about 350 AD, or, you know, you don't see this with in the apostles. You don't see these with the apostolic fathers, uh, you know, in the 100, 200 ADs. None of these, these teachings that I'm going to talk about tonight came back, came on the scene until uh, 350. Um, and, you know, that's because Satan couldn't put out the church, right? He was, he was at war with the church, couldn't stamp it out. So like, hey, we can't beat him, join him. And he already has the world, so he's not really at war with the world because they're already blind and led astray. So he's at war with the church. So what does he do? He comes into the, you know, the church. Uh, you know, you see Catholicism on the rise. You know, then you see like all the crusades in the name of God. You know, they they do atrocities, but you know they were never Christians, right? It was never all these atrocities that were done in history were never they weren't they weren't Christian. It was just in name only. You know, it was, uh, and that's what Satan's war was with the church, and that's why you see all today these big time. Uh, mega pastors and all these churches, uh, you know, out there deceiving people. And you have all the uh, the different denominations, you know, Mormonism, uh, Seventh Day Adventists, uh, Jehovah Witnesses, uh, popping up because that's Satan's job to deceive, and he's trying to deceive the church and leave leave people uh, leave people astray. So, um, let's see what the word says. So they they look at this, and just in the beginning. We see thou art highly favored and blessed. And Esau here, we have this word. Um, says all generations will call her blessed. Did she prophesy? Well, we know all generations will call Mary blessed, right? And we'll get, we're going to get down to that. Um, and yes, yeah, so uh, she, that could be a prophecy. That could be a prophecy in a positive way. Or she could have been saying that in a, you know, not in a bad way, but in just, you know, as this is what's going to happen. That is true. Um, but. Let's keep reading. I'm going to come back to this. I highlight these words for a reason. And when she saw him, she was troubled in her mind and she, and, uh, and cast in her mind what manner of salutations she should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor, again, favor, another word, favor with God. 
And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and he shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Right, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. Praise God. All right. Then said unto Mary, the, the, uh, then said Mary unto the angel, you know, how shall this be? Seeing I know, I know no man, right? So she is saying she's a virgin, but uh, here's one of them, right? I know no man. So they say this right here. See, Mary didn't know a man. She she would never know a man because the womb inside her would have to be a holy womb. And because God would come into this world through her womb, right, that, uh, of course, she would not let uh, you know, they consider like a portal. They, she would not let another baby come into her womb um, and taint it, right? Or, but you could throw that on the flip side. You could be like, well, if God and the Holy Spirit came into her and she had Jesus, think about how blessed her womb would be. It'd be able to just, it'd be so fruitful, it just shoot out babies, right? You know, which we know. Well, we'll see what Scripture says about her having, you know, children after her. Um, you know, he said unto her, you know, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the higher shall overshadow thee and you shall have, the, you know, you shall be born unto you, the son of God. Right. And he talks about, she talks about uh, Mary conceiving. And we know that Mary goes and visits uh, Elizabeth. Now let's look at, uh, now let's just look at this. If Mary was uh, sinless, right. If she had the immaculate conception, right. If she was the mother of God, like deity in this sort of this sort of way that they like to speak let let's see what what she says about who she is and what what she sees jesus as right a lot of this should just immediately destroy any of these and you know these false teachings but let's just look at it so mary said uh and mary said my soul doth magnify the lord and my spirit hath rejoiced in god my savior now this word savior is sotier which means a deliverer right so why would why would Mary rejoice in God, her deliverer, her savior, if she was sinless, if she was born from an immaculate conception like, you know, Jesus, right? She was born into the world sinless, which means, you know, she couldn't have a father because obviously if we come from Adam, all through Adam are fallen. So she couldn't have a father, right? So she would have had to been born what the same way Jesus and be sinless and she would have no need for a savior because she wouldn't need to die. Right, because uh, because of death, right, the wages of sin is death, so she wouldn't need to die, right? For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaid, right? For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, right? For he that is mighty have done to me great things, and holy is his name. He has showed me, uh, he has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. Right now we know, and I do go back to uh, what, what uh, uh, Dan, what you were saying. I think she's prophesying because I think this is also prophesying still, because obviously we know the mighty is still ruling, and those that are filled right now are rich. They still have their they still have their blessings, right? You still have all these people holding on to their money. So it a lot of this seems to me. Like this is prophesying in the future when just like when Jesus is given the Beatitudes, right? Blessed are they who are hungry now for they shall be filled. I think this is her prophesying. He hath hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spake to our fathers. So now Mary's saying that this is our fathers to Abraham, to his seed forever. The seed being here, you know, uh, you know, obviously we know through all Abraham's descendants shall be blessed, right? By faith. But the seed, we know the seed is Jesus, the seed spoken of. But and Mary abode with them about three months. So Mary is saying that she comes from Abraham. So if she's in the line of Abraham all the way down, because we know she is, then she is a sinful, she is born into sin, and she's a sinner just like the rest of us. And she even calls herself of low estate and says that she needs a savior. So right there we have an admission a uh, problem with the Immaculate Conception. Um, just by her own words, to me it would seem. Right now, let's go. Let's go to. Uh, we're gonna look at Matthew now. Matthew 118. We're gonna be in the birth of Jesus. And now we're gonna look at uh, uh, perpetual virginity. Right. So we've kind of looked at sin. If if she was saying she was a sinner in need of a savior, like the rest of us, which seems right. And then we're gonna go to scripture later. But 
But now let's look at um, – they say that uh, she didn't have – she's a perpetual virgin. She didn't know Joseph, uh, and the, the, the wording that's used just means like a coming together, not a coming together in a, in a relationship sense. But then again, if you were to be man and wife to become one flesh, it's kind of like Joseph and Mary would have been living a lie if they weren't married back then because you – back then they sealed the deal with uh, – with uh you know yes so anyways the birth of jesus christ was on this wise when his mother mary was espoused to joseph before they came together before they came together right now they say this is just them coming together to be husband and wife not coming together uh in a sexual way and they say there's there's no way that we can prove that came together means in a sexual way we'll find out she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And Joseph, her husband, being a just man, was not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord appeared to him unto a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee and marry thy wife, uh, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. He shall bring forth a son, and his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now look at this. Uh, now, all this was done that might be fulfilled, which the Lord has spoken, uh, excuse me, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, behold, a virgin. It just says this. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and she shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, being interpreted God with us. Now, this does not say perpetual virginity. It says a virgin who has never known a man would have a child by God, meaning there is no, uh, you know, there is no man, a fallen man given her a baby to, uh, you know, in a fallen state, right? In the image of, uh, you know, because we're all born in the image of our father, right? We're not, we're, we have the image of God, but when you actually read, what is it, Luke, uh, Genesis 5, you see that when uh, Adam had a son, right? Uh, Seth was in the likeness of his father, but not in the likeness of God, right? So you see that change from Genesis 2 when Adam was uh, like the, uh, Created after, uh, you know, I think it was even Genesis 1, where we were created in the image of God. Now we're in the images of our Father, which still we are, in, uh, yes, in the image of God, but we're in a fallen state, which is why, you know, it changed from, uh, it said Seth is the image of his Father. Anyways, so, but we, we don't see anything. There's nothing here about being a perpetual virginity uh, in Luke or Matthew. And I don't, I don't see how they can say that, that these teach to perpetual virginity. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord said, you know, I bid him, and took unto him his wife. Look, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth, brought forth her firstborn. So, knew her not till. Does that not seem that, hey, she does not know him? They did not come together until Jesus was born, but knew her not till? This till kind of, to me... And I don't know if any of y'all y'all agree, but this is saying, hey, they came together. They consummated the marriage after Jesus was born. But let's go back up. They said because we can't prove that this word came together means any kind of a, of a sexual in a, in, a, in a consummation way. Right now, this says to convene, to depart in company, to be in association with. Right. To cohabit, co cohabitate conjugally. But even the definition here says this. Right. Uh, conjugal co cohabitation but let's find out if we could prove that this uh maybe this has some uh where it actually straight up means to come together so let's look at first corinthians 7 the principles for marriage um now concerning these things whereof you wrote unto me it is good for a man not to touch a woman right so paul is saying it is good for a man not to touch a woman nevertheless to avoid fornication let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Now, when he says it is good for a man not to touch a woman or vice versa, um, and you'll you'll re read later on this, it's because if you are single, or if you're uh, you know divorced, or if you are a widow, um, now you can straight focus on heavenly things instead of worldly things. Like I have to focus on Aria and my wife, um, and then uh, I have to do my duty. So I have to focus focus on earthly things and not just heavenly things, right? So this is why he said it's good not to touch women. So you can stay focused on God, right? But anyway, so let – now look at this. Let the husband render unto the wife due, due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto her husband, right? 
So don't defraud your your spouse. You know, um, intimate time. The wife have not the power over her body, but the husband in excuse me, but the husband. And likewise, the husband hath not power over his body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incon incontensity. Incontensity. And I'm sorry, guys, I don't know how to say that word. Your, your, you know, for your lack of self-control, right? Um, so but look at this word, come together. We know this is talking about a sexual encounter. So coming together clearly means or can clearly mean a, uh, a consummation or sexual uh, relationship, right? To have sex. I'm sorry, we're all big kids here. So clearly um, people cannot say that, that Mark, uh, excuse me, Matthew, Matthew 1 does not teach that Jesus and Mary, um, Joseph and Mary did not have sex because it's clearly, to me, it's very clear. We'll go back to it. Um, it's very clear. Before they came together, she was found with the child. So in other words, before they did anything, they came together. She was pregnant from the Holy Ghost. And then clearly it says he knew her not until the firstborn, until Jesus was brought forth. So to me, this clearly debunks um, uh, perpetual virginity. Clearly debunks that. Um, now, is that a, is 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 that a a salvation issue, right? To say that uh, Mary was a perpetual virgin, no. But to say that she was sinless, I think borderlines on something where it could be a, a salvific issue, right? Because if Jesus said he he was the only one who knew no sin, right? And he gave us he gave his life, right, for us. Um, but then we see that Mary knew no sin. Uh, it, it makes Jesus a liar, and in in that in that fact, and we uh, we're teach, we're preaching a different gospel, or, or we're believing in a different Jesus. To me, it it could it's a it's a slippery slope there, all right. And yes, Art, he uh, he did have brothers and sisters after him, but they they say that that um that those were cousins, right? That uh, the brothers and sisters they say brothers as in immediate family, right? But not or not immediate family like cousins. Because they, they, they incorporate that word because when you click on that word, it could be meaning a, a cousin. But um, so they try to twist it. But I'm just showing from this, it clearly means uh, before they came together to, uh, you know, make official husband and wife. All right. So but now let's go back. Let's go back and look, look at Luke. I, I, I like this part because um, when the angel of the Lord comes to uh, Mary and this is they, they prop Mary up here. And Mary is – oh, oh wait. I wanted to show this. Why is Mary blessed? Why uh, 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 why is she special? Well, look what um, – look, uh, look what she says, right? I think it's uh, – right, let me go back up here. I think – okay. Okay, right here. So this is uh, Martha, right? So I mean not Martha. Excuse me. Uh, Elizabeth. Look what Elizabeth says. Uh, and this is Luke 143. And whence it uh, is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come come to me. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped within my, in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that – what? Believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told from her from the Lord. So Mary is blessed. We're seeing this again because why? She believed the Lord. Abraham believed the Lord. Joseph – or uh, Isaac, Jacob believed the Lord, so they were counted faithful or righteous. Mary believed the Lord, what he said, right? So why is she blessed? Because she believed. Now check this out. Now when we go back and we look at Luke 128, where the angel of the Lord is telling her and says to her, Hail, thou art highly favored. So I was like, okay, she is highly favored. But is there anybody else highly favored, right? Let, let's look at this. Anybody else highly favored? Anybody else highly favored that that believes? All right, Ephesians. We know that Ephesians is written. You, uh, we like to say is written to the bride of Christ, right? Bless. I'm gonna start Ephesians one three. Bless be the God and Father of our Lord. Je uh, excuse me. Bless be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, right? Who hath blessed us, blessed us, right? We see this word blessing here, a little bit different word um, than another one I'm going to show. Uh, according, he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Look at this word, accepted. Made us accepted. Right here, let's see. Thou art highly favored. Right? Made us accepted. Right here. Let's see. 5784. Right here. To make graceful. Right? Can you see it right here? The same two words. Grace, special honor, make accepted. Oh, I'm in, it's in one stay or one strong. Excuse me. Grace, a special honor, make accepted. So if you go to Thayer, right, on both of them, uh, to make graceful. Uh, so he's saying thou art highly favored. Why? Because Mary believed. She, he, they, obviously, God knew Mary was going to believe. But who else is highly favored? He hath made us accepted. The same word, the same definitions, graceful, right, strongs, to be grace, special honor, to make accepted, to be highly favored. So all those who are in Christ are highly favored, right? But look here. The Lord is uh, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Look at the word blessed here. To praise, to celebrate with praise, right? Let me go to the strongs. To speak well of, to bless. But look here. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings, those who are in Christ Jesus. So why is Mary blessed? Because she believed, she believed the message of the Lord, right? So this is why she blessed. So I'm not taking away anything from Mary, but uh, those who – it's Mary, you could say, well, maybe was the first one in Christ, having Christ inside of her, right? She was on that path. But um, all those who are in Christ have the same blessing. I just want to show that. I just thought that was pretty cool. Any kind of word study. and oh, So I'm just trying to take uh, Mary off this platform. If anybody watches this, that is, you know, follow, believes this because there's several people that um, they elevate Mary to this. Like I could pray to Mary. Mary can intercede for me. But Mary is just like us in Christ Jesus. So now let's look at this. Uh, get to some differences in the Gospels real quick. And I, I love this. I, I love this saying when I read this. Um, no, was it um, true blessedness? True blessedness. Which one was it? Was it 11? I think it was 11 or 12. All right. Here. So in Luke 11, this is only in Luke 11, by the way. And it came to pass as, she, as he spake these things, right? This is Luke eleven twenty seven. A certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which thou hast sucked. So somebody in the crowd yelling out to Jesus, Blessed is the womb that bore thee, you know, blessed are the paps. You know, you have even had that Catholic uh, prayer. But look what Jesus says. He says, but he said, yea, rather. Now look at this word, yea, rather. It means uh, nay, but, or yeah, doubtless right and you look at the there it means nay surely like like you know when somebody would say something they're like hey um uh tribulations three years long or hey we're we've been in the tribulation for three and a half years now you're like yeah no right this is what jesus is saying to me he's like yeah no blessed are they that hear the word of god and keep it now if if we were to put mary on this pedestal that a lot of like uh, the Marian uh, Mariologists just or the dogma of the Catholic Church or, you know, or the Orthodox, they like to put Mary on this. Wouldn't he say, yes, blessed is Mary, the mother of God, right? My mother, right? And blessed are they. But look what he says. He says, yea, rather. And, and, and like this is like saying nay, surely. You know, when Jesus says surely, surely, it's like a strong thing. He's saying, yeah, doubtless or doubt that. But they are here. They are. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. So you would think he would have said something in a positive light, but he's saying, yeah, no, doubtful or that, you know, no, uh, scratch that. This is how you're blessed. All right. Now let's check out some differences in the gospel. And this was pretty cool because I noticed one of these today. 
and I thought this was awesome. What's up, Raja? Art? I didn't say hi to everybody. I said hi to a lot of people. I got, I'm using a StreamYard now, so I can click on people's comments, and it makes y'all pop up, so I feel like I'm a professional. <laughs> yeah. Yes, rather. So letting us know. Letting us know, yes, not, not this, but this. Blessed are they who hear the word of God and do it. Now we're going to look at, um, no, it was eight. It was definitely eight. Was it eight? It was Luke 819. Yes, Jesus' mothers and Jesus, mothers and brothers. Right. Now we're gonna look at uh uh if Jesus had family or not, which clearly he he did, but otherwise why would they say this? Um it would have been Mark three. All right, so we're looking at uh Luke eight nineteen through twenty one and Mark three thirty one. Now in Luke it says uh, 819, and then came unto him his mother and his brethren, right? Now, Adelphos is the word here. Nowhere in the New Testament is this word ever used for cousin, by the way. So people try to say this means cousin. Nowhere in the New Testament does this word ever mean cousin. It means immediate Adelphi, which means a brother, right? A brother of the womb. So just so you're, so somebody can't try to pass that off on you, they can't say it because they'll try to swing it. And uh, they'll try to, uh, you know, twist the, t the text, but no text is of private interpretation, right? It, what does it say? So this is what we're looking at. So um, his mother and his brother, his brethren, could not come at him for the press. And it was told to him by a certain which said, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to see thee. And he said, and he answered and said unto them. My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. Right? So again, there would have been this time for Jesus to say, yes, clear a path for my mother. She is holy. She is without sin. Clear a path. This is deity walking. Let her come to me. Right? But instead he says, um, uh, who's my, he didn't even, he didn't even ask the question here in Luke. He just says, my family are those which hear the word of God and do it. Now let's look at Mark. Now, if anybody is, has uh, never heard of the differences in the gospel before, as I know a lot of people have, but anybody knew, Luke uh, is written to the bride of Christ. Mark is written to the sleeping church. Matthew is written to the Jews. And whenever you compare the gospels like I'm doing the same stories in each one, you'll always notice certain differences that always populate. Always, It's always the same patterns that are, uh, that are popping up, right? Uh, in Luke, you'll never see Jesus berate this group. He'll never really ask them a question. Like you'll like right like say for instance, let me show you in Mark here. Uh, then we see in Mark three thirty one. Then came uh, then uh, there came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek thee. And he answered unto them, saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? Right. And they looked around about. Right. And they they didn't answer, right? But he's asking them a question, and you'll always notice in Mark he'll all he'll ask questions to this group like, "How is it that you don't know the scriptures, or why is it you do not read the scriptures?" But you'll never see that kind of condemnation in Luke, because Luke are those who do do the will of God, seek the will of God, read the Word of God, and please God, right? Not not for salvation, but because we wish to please God. And it is Christ in us doing the good works, right? It's not us that do the good works. It's Christ in us because we have been saved to do good works for God, right? But then he says, and he looked round about on them which sat about him and said, behold, now look look how the subtle difference is here. Uh, and we know that Mark is a tribulation uh, time period as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, seals trump and Matthew would be a trumpet's portion. But look here, it says, uh, for whoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. So now we just see whoever shall do the will of God. There's there's this there's the difference here where you always see in Luke, hear the word of God, those that hear, those that read, right? It's this beforehand. Now in Mark, it's a time to do, right? In tribulation, you're going to have to do. It's no longer uh, – it's time's up. You're going to have to pretty much – there are it's still believing on Jesus, but there's works you have to do now. Because you're going to have to do certain things and uh, turn from certain things to stay from the mark. But again, whosoever shall do the will of God, the same as my brother and my sister. Now let's jump to Matthew real quick and look how Matthew changes up. 
12. 1240. And this is cool because we know that the father's group is Israel, right? The Jews, right? So watch out, watch how it changes. I, I, I love this. While he yet talked, this is Matthew 1246. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without him, desiring to speak to him. Then one of them, then one said unto him, behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto them, who is my mother? Again, the questions, because the Jews don't read. We know that the sleeping church, they don't read the gospels. They don't read the Bible in name only, right? So they're asked the question, same thing as the Jews. The Jews don't read. Who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand to his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my brethren, for whoever, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same as my brother, my sister, and my mother. So now look how we, it's added in my father here. Whereas in uh, Luke, it says whoever does the will of God or the, you know, the word of God, whoever hears the word of God and does it. And Mark, it's whoever does the will of God, but now it's my father. So again, it's just so uh, a distinctions in the gospels and the audience they're intended to now in a, in a, uh, a prophetic nature, right? As obviously we know the whole Bible is written in a, what was, a what is to take it for personal learning right now and growth, but for what will be each gospel has an audience in mind. So you see this distinction, but again, in the three, in the three, the four, actually the times two, twice in Luke and, you know, and once in Mark and Matthew, <clears throat> if God, Mary was to be put on this deity platform, there would have been some kind of, uh, some kind of elevation. You, you would think Jesus would have gave us notice, like, yes, let my mother come to me, clear the path. But instead he said, uh, he didn't, he didn't put the, her on a pedestal or his brothers or sisters. He just said, no, whoever, whoever does the will of God, these are my family, right? So, but you would, you, you would think he would have put her on a platform. So you clearly can't say to me, in my opinion, what, what scripture is unfolding before us is to say that Mary would, is to be worshipped as a uh, deity or to be uh, this the mother of God, the Theotokos, or however they say it, um, that she is the God bearer, right? She is the mother of Jesus, and she obviously was an awesome woman, but not to be put on the elevate, a platform elevated. And then sinless, I mean, let's just look at this. Uh, uh, I don't need what all it was through Adam. Let me do it. Was it through Adam? Uh, Adam all sin. Can't remember. You know, it's gonna be a, a Google term. Uh, through Adam all sin. Verse uh, Romans five twenty one. Romans five. 21. Romans 5 to 1, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal. No, whoever sin, what is it? 5? Why did it bring me there? That's not what I'm looking for. Oh, 5 12. I'm sorry. All right. Yeah. Wherefore, and we're just going to look at this, right? If if somebody should have, if there should have been somebody else with no sin, we would we have known about it, right? I think the apostles would have wrote about it. So death in Adam, life in Christ. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men except Mary. I'm sorry, no, it doesn't say that. It says death has passed to all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Oh, wait. Abraham, the father, remember Mary said her father, her, the father's, she was including herself, was Abraham, which we know is in this line, nevertheless reigned uh, from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come, the figure of Jesus, right? But not as the offense, but not as the offense. So also if the free gift, for it is through the offense of one, many be dead, Adam, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man and one woman, Mary and Jesus Christ, um, excuse me, by one man, Jesus Christ has abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for 
The judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification, right? For if by one man, one man's offense, death reigned by one, right? Again, one man, death at everybody, much more they receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall be in life by one Jesus Christ, no Mary. So if Mary was a sinless person and she knew no sin, Mary could have gave her life for us, right? So that that means there would have been a human being, another human being who could have kept the law perfect. But nowhere in the Gospels, nowhere in the writings does it say this. You have to read into the text or you have to uh, build a snap message, right? You have to go pick a, pick a verse here, pick a verse here. But you're only picking a part of the verse and, and you're not going to put it in context. So if somebody will say Genesis this, Leviticus this, uh, 1 Kings this you know, Revelation 12, 5, this, and they're picking verses like that. It should be red flags because there's no context. What they're doing is they're building their scriptures, and they're building their own little teaching, and they're pulling out of context. And that, that should be a red flag for anybody. So I don't see anywhere how you could assume that Mary, the mother of God, deity, immaculate conception, she knew no sin, her perpetual virginity, and nowhere in the Bible does it say she was raptured or taken up into heaven, right? Because it does let us know that Enoch and Elijah were taken. But if they were taken and the Bible went to you know great lengths to let us know that, why wouldn't it tell us that Mary was taken? Now, some will say that the Revelation 12 sign is a sign that Mary, the mother of God, is in the heaven. So when they say uh, the woman, uh, the woman clothed in the sun and the moon under her feet and the twelve stars, that you know they say that uh, her head is crowned with the twelve stars. They're saying it's uh, the twelve tribes and it's a, a picture of Mary. First it was Eve, and then it went to Israel, and then Mary, right? As in like this line. They they literally this is how they do it. They 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 stretch things, and but they won't give any context, so they won't go to scripture. They'll say it like I'm saying now. And they'll say, and this woman appeared, this is, this is Mary. So this is letting us know before the world began that Mary was going to be crowned the queen of heaven and she was going to rule and reign. Literally, they say this. And yet, uh, uh, but there's no scripture saying, hey, Mary was, uh, you know, raptured out of the world as well. But yes, Virgo is a picture of the virgin birth, right? But, um. Uh, a picture of the virgin birth, but not a picture of Mary reigning in heaven as the uh, the queen of heaven or the mother of God, and that she was raptured. Right? You see how they they'll 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 take that and they'll twist it. But there is no scripture. Where where's the text? Like when you you they say, oh well, it's uh it, there's no verbatim verse. They, they'll say things like uh well you can't find a script. Like show me the Trinity in the Bible. Well you won't find the Trinity in the Bible. Right. But you will find the concept of the Trinity in the Bible. Right. You will see Jesus saying, I and the father are one. All right. And then you'll see uh, things like, let's see, was it John? Um, was it John where Jesus says, I will send you another? Was it John 14? Um, and I am the way, no truth. If you love me, keep the Holy Spirit. What's the promise of the Holy Spirit? Um, OK, look, so. Uh, the concept, the concept of the Trinity is taught in the Bible, and here's here's how it's taught. And you can go to. So Jesus says, "If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another Comforter, that He may abide with you forever." We know this is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. So you look at this word "another," and it means "alos." But when you look at this, when you look up the word "what alos" means, it means different of the same kind. So you have to go do your word studies. It means another of the same kind. So that's what this word alos means, another of the same kind. You can go look this up. I tell you to go look it up. So if the comforter, and you'll see in here, Jesus alludes to him as he, 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 he will dwell with you. He will do, He will convict the world of sin. He will do all these things. And we know the Holy Ghost spoke in Acts, right? We know that the church was called like the Holy Ghost, God, called Saul. Or what does he say? He, he literally claims that he called uh the apostle, or you have to read, I can't remember exactly, I want to quote it, but you'll see that the Holy Ghost calls people into servitude, right? Um, but this, another, I will send you another comforter. So if you're not, if you're a different, but of the same kind, that means you're not Jesus Christ and you're not the Father. 
Because he's saying, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another, another different from me, right? So again, here's your proof that the Holy Spirit is right here, different, but one of the same, alos, the word alos, right? Um, <clears throat> what's up, G? I hope the pagans need to be shown. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, you know, they, uh, the, yeah, yes, uh, there are pagans that need to be, they need to see this. And, I, you know, if, this, if one person can see this, right, and he can argue and just be stubborn, but then see this and then, you know, get out of that. Because if, if you believe Mary sinless and if you believe that she can intercede for you, then what was the point of Jesus dying on the cross if Mary was already sinless for us? There would be no point of that. Do you see? So it's a different gospel, right? And they, they literally they, – they would say things that this is salvific. Like if you don't believe that she is uh, without sin, you don't believe that she was perpetual virginity. Like these things are – that the early apostles taught or the apostolic fathers taught, which they didn't. Some apostolic fathers taught it, but after 350 AD. And why? Be we, we know that Satan would creep into the church and they would be apostolic fathers who you would think sound good. Just like today, there's a lot of preachers out there that sound good. But then when you start to hear them say things, you're like, wait a minute. Um, uh, a born again believer can't be, uh, you know, demon possessed. You can be oppressed, but you can't, there's no reason for you to have demons cast out if you're born again because the Holy Spirit has sealed you and stronger that is he that is in you than is in the world, right? So how can the, the strong man come into you, bind the, the weak man and kick him out? But then you're telling me the strong man can be overpowered by a demon and be kicked out, so he has to be kicked? That doesn't make sense to me. So um, here's a, a good uh, a Trinity discussion. But again, the concept of the Trinity is in the Bible. But the concept of saying G Mary was – Raptured is not in the Bible. If, now, if you can prove it, if you can teach it, like with Scripture, I'm all for it, right? Uh, used to have a family member deceived by this, and it breaks my heart that they will not hear it in a cult. I, uh, man, I'll pray, man, I'll, I'll pray your family comes out of it. I know, man. My grandma, she thinks I pray for her every day, and I'll pray for your family. Um, my grandma believes the Pope is amazing, right? She's 80, but gonna be 90, so she obviously she just. We were raised Catholic, you know, I, it didn't stick with me, but she, you know, goes to church, not so much anymore, but, you know, cause she's, she can't get around, but you know, she thinks the Pope and this Pope is eviler than all get out, but she doesn't see the things that are said. She just knows what the, uh, the priest says, but yes, man, I, uh, I, uh, there's a lot of my family member from New Orleans. I'm originally from New Orleans. They're all Catholics, right? Um, uh, but they're coming out of it. Thank God. Thank God. Um, but it, it's prayer. It's prayer, prayer. That's, that's. Telling them and showing them is one thing, but prayer, man, prayer is our best. And I have family members that I pray for, and I need, I've never thought that they were, you know, in Christ. And then I speak to them, and they're like, "Oh yeah, they're they're talk, they're telling their friends about the rapture." I'm like, "What?" I'm like, "God, you are amazing. This is crazy." Um, but we know, um, it's what did you say, Art? Let's see. You says they have how many fooled a billion? Not to mention those who refuse to Christ because of the false mainstream religions. Yes, uh, because they teach that uh, there's many ways, right? That Muslims, exactly. Yes, billions fooled, billions fooled. Uh, it's 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 terrible. All right. So I think I think that's enough. I think I just wanted to do a small teaching on it, on uh, on the difference in the gospels. So do we, we want to see anything about the rapture? Do y'all want to see something about uh, you know if uh, you know? Possibly 2023 still time frame. <clears throat> Sorry, Alan, not 2024. <clears throat> I'm not jumping that boat until until next year because there's a study I've done that I just can't get over until until we, we get there. Do y'all want to see it? I'll show it to you anyway. Even if you don't want to see it, I'm still going to show it. So um, put this up. Click this. Hold on. I made a – need to bring this up. You just one. All right. So the uh, the Deuteronomy verse counts. So I've showed this before. We've talked about this this before, All right? And so in the Torah, right? In the uh, uh, their their verses, they're, I think they're, they're just a few off. There's like one or two off where the numbers don't add up from like the King James to like the Torah, the the Hebrew Bible, right? Um, but Deuteronomy 30 verse 5 is the 5,700 and 
I got it written right here, I think, but no. It was, uh, yeah, the 500 and 5,000, excuse me, 5,708th verse of the Bible, right? So this was the 5,708th verse in the Bible. And in the year, the Hebrew year of 5708 is when Jerusalem became a nation again, which was in 1948, our year, right? And when you read this, it says, and the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. And thou shalt possess it, and he will do good and multiply thee above thy fathers. So they were brought into the land in the year 5708 in the Deuteronomy, in the 5708th verse, right? And we see in Leviticus, right? Let me do Leviticus 19. Or is it Leviticus 19, 23? It says, when you come into the land and I planted all manner of trees for food, you shall count the years of... Uh, the fruit uncircumcised, three years shall it be uncircumcised unto thee, and shall not be eaten of. So you come into the land, three years uncircumcised. The fourth year it shall be holy praise to the Lord. You're supposed to give it to the Lord, obey the Lord. And the fifth year forward is when uh, the increase the, uh, of the land is all yours, right? You have the increase. All the increase of is now yours, right? So it's it's your time to enjoy the spoils of the land from the fifth year forward. Now we know in 5708, when they came into the land, there was four years left on their Shemitah, right? And in the fifth year would have been the beginning of a new Shemitah cycle for the Jews, right? You can go look that up. That's when it happened. So now if we go back to Deuteronomy, we see the first year, the third year. We're, we're doing a verse count, year to verse count. So this is 5708, 5709, 5710, right? Right. So you're following. Is that way you can follow with me here? Let me just move this over. Yep, you can see here, 5709 year. This is also the verse, the years, right? Okay, so now check this out. So 57, like I said, so first year, second year, third year, fourth year. Now look what it says. Remember it says the fourth year is holy unto the Lord. So you're supposed to do this thing for the Lord. Look what it says. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of and thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments, which I have commanded thee this day. So you see how that parallels. It's You're supposed to give it to the Lord. You're supposed to obey the voice of the Lord. So what are you doing? You're obeying. You're listening to the Lord. You're giving it to the Lord. Now look, the fifth year forward, look what it says. We knew that they get to enjoy the increase of the land. Now look what this says, the fifth, the fifth verse later. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thy hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of the cattle, and the fruit of the land, for good. And the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good as he rejoiced over thy fathers. So again, what do they get to do? They get to enjoy the, the, the labor. What did Leviticus 19.23 uh, say? In the fifth year forward, you get to enjoy the labor. So again, the fifth year. What do we have here? The fifth year. Type in shadows here. Now, we know they came into the land in 1948. And 19 years later, what happened? What happened? Pop quiz. Who gets it right first? 19 years later, what happened? We're not going until somebody types it. Waiting. Somebody knows what happened 19 years later. 19 years later after they came into the land. There was a very short what? Yes, 67, the war. Okay, yep, art, uh, yep, there we go. All right, all right, yep, the six-day war, right? Uh, uh, and so what do we do? We go 19 verses later, right? I'm going to skip because I already know which one it is. It's Deuteronomy 31, verse 4, right? We go here, uh, Deuteronomy... Uh, which is which is um, this is 1967, which is Deuteronomy 3104, which in our 1967 was the Hebrew year. It, well, in 1967, so you can see this. This is our year on this this platform. This is our year, and this is the Hebrew year because in the half of our year, the Hebrews year, it's you know it's one. Then it changes that Tishri or September and goes into the next year. So I that's why I have it split up here. So 1967, it was 5728, uh, 5727, and 5728. But in this year, these two years, uh, or 1967, 19 years later, the Six Day War happened. Now, when you go 19 verses later after they come into the land, you come into this one, and the Lord shall do unto them as He did Zihon and Og, king of the Amorites, and unto the land, and unto the land of them whom He destroyed. 
Now, the same territories that they got in the Six Day War are the same territories they got from Zihon and Og. I mean, if God can prophesy perfect, obviously we know, duh. But the same territories they got from these, the Zion and Og, are the same territories they won in the Six Day War. Amazing, right? So now we're going to jump down. We're going to go to all the way to uh, modern uh, today, right? Which is uh, Deuteronomy 32, 29. So this is this year. So this is, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, or excuse me, right here. So uh, 2023, so you got 2022, excuse me, I don't want to do that. You see 2022 here, which is, it's both, you'll see it here. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, and they would consider their latter end. And this is why I'm still holding on. This is what I'm still looking at here. This is, this latter end is the uh, Lador Akaref, which means the terminal end, the last generation. Oh, if the last generation would understand this, then they would know that they were wise, right? So we have this, this type and shadow of the last generation, that something's about to happen. The next year it says, how should one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight, except their rock had sold them unto the Lord and the Lord had shut them up. So we see this capitalized rock. We know this is Jesus, right? Sold them. And look at this word. And the Lord had shut them up. When we look at this word shut up, it means to surrender or to deliver up or to give over. So we know that in tribulation, they are given over to their pleasures. They are left, they are left here in, to go through tribulation because they have been sold right by Jesus. Because Jesus gave his blood. He purchased the whole world so he could do what he wants, right? Um, uh, you're, everybody in the world, like this is how I say it. Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. So everybody in the world just has to take the get out of sin free card, right? They have to believe in the death, you know, turn to Jesus, to repent. Have a relationship with him. And the moment you do that, you can pick up your your card because it's already been bought and paid for, right? So if you don't do that, he can sell you because he's already paid for the sin of the world, right? It's only those who take advantage of the blood are those who believe in it. Um, so again here, so put ten thousand to flight unless their rock has shut them up. So we see this delivering over, give over. But now if we go over here, this was in 2022, Deuteronomy 32:29, but it's the year 5782 to 5783. So, and, and actually, 75 years in, so we have the 70 years of Israel, right? Them being in the land still, which is, you know, we have that 70 years, the generation. Then you have that four years, and then you have the fifth year forward. So that ends right here, the 74 years. Uh, excuse me, right here. This is this, this time period here. This would be the beginning of the 75th year right here. This is where it would end, right here. All right, so... If we're looking at this, them being scattered, to me, the last portion, this is it right here, before the scattering has to take place. So this is why I'm still hopeful in watching this year, because if you start it and you go down 70 from when it began, right? Because they, you know, this year isn't complete. This is one year, right? So it's one full year and go all the way down to complete, 74 years complete. And then you're in this year. Right. So I'm looking at it as and if you and if you followed it, I mean, this is amazing that he prophesied this much and everything's hitting and you have these last 14 verses. All right. So if you look at this, let me go to Deuteronomy. You look at this. It says uh, they were given over. Right. They were shut up. They were given over. But if we go, this would have been first year tribulation, second year tribulation, third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year. Seventh year. Now look what happens in the seventh year. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants. So the Lord is forgiving his people when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. Now look at this word, what it changes to. There is none shut up or left. But there's none left or shut up. But look what this word means. It means to assemble, to close up, to recover. So you have a giving over, but then you have a recovering with the same word though being shut up. But the word shut up is different. This one means to give over. This one means to assemble. And we know in the seventh year, the great multitude rapture. But then look, now we know that Jesus on the Mount of Olives is here, right? Uh, he comes and it, you have the Gog and Magog war where he scatters, every, you know, where all the nations come to him. He, he scatters them, right? Uh, kills the, uh, the 
Antichrist, but the false prophet's still alive, right? And the Ten Kings, they've just lost their territories, right? Their power, but they're still here. And look what he's saying. Look at and, and he shall say, Where is where are their gods and their rock in whom they're trusted? Which do eat the fat of the sacrifice and drink their wine. So this is the first year after he's back. He's saying, Where's your God? Where where, where where's he at? Oh, did I just toss him into the pit? Yeah, I did. Right? I'm sorry, I'm ad libbing. Um, but we see the first year, second year, third year, fourth year, right? And and look look at this. He's saying we 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 kind of think of this again thing is supposed to happen. He says, For I lift up my hand to heaven and I say I live forever. He he lifts up his hands. I mean, he did, you know, it's to me it's like a type of shadow. It's like, mm, you know, uh, in the year that we think this uh, again is supposed to take place or something, right? For I lift up my hand and I say I live forever. So again, first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year, look, seven. The last verse before and it's over. Rejoice, O ye nations and his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and, re and re render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. Why? Because we know the bold judgments are being poured out and that he has given all the 12 tribes back their lands, which he had promised them, right? Which he had made promise to Abraham. And look what it says in the next verse. The Jubilee, he would say this to Jubilee. And Moses came and spake all these words of this song in the ears of the people. He and Hos Hos Hosea, Hosh, ho, ho, you know, Hosea, the son of noon, right? Type of shadow of Jesus. Um, and it's the end. So how can you have all this perfect prophecy and yet it matches up and we're, and, and we're, we're like, we're right here, guys. It's like, to me, it's right here. 5783 is ending. And then, uh, it's, I, so to me, I'm, I can't go, I can't jump to, uh, uh, you know, next year. August or whatever until until wake me up until September's over right that's where I'm stuck wake me up when September's over um so that's that's uh something and of course we know right we know there's always this what is it I think it's Exodus 34 uh 22 and thou shall because we always say you know we're the the feast of first fruits just type in shadow of the feast of first fruits and we still have this and thou shall observe the feast of weeks Excuse me, the feast of weeks, not the feast of first fruits. Feast of weeks. Thou shalt observe the feast of weeks and the first for the wheat of the wheat harvest at the feast of in gathering at the year's end. Well, we know this takes place uh, what Tishri 14, right before Tabernacles. So I'm like, could this be it? Do we know for certain? I don't know. Um, but I'm not going to stop hoping, right? Especially since I have this and this plays out in Tishri. So we'll find out. We'll find out. Could it be? the start and then the 50 days happen and then like the 50 days don't have to end on anything special it could to me anyways but um you have also uh 5784 uh this guy did a number study which that means a lot um so i'm not i'm not i'm not giving up you know we're, we're gonna keep looking up and if it passes then it passes but we keep uh we keep watching right we keep watching and waiting so i just thought that was all you know just something to still be hopeful for we are finishing up right here, and then scattered picks up 5784 in Tishri, and then and then this study, I'm done with it, and I'll, I'll I'll let it die, and I'll be like I don't understand. But until then, we're gonna keep watching. October 8th, 2023. Uh, I will. October 8th, what the year of release? October 8th. I still feel that it's this year too. Any day now, I just. Look at what's happening out there, especially with the upcoming new pandemic. Yes, I, uh, I, I can't, you know, I, how could, if it goes another year, it goes another year, you know, um, uh, he who has kept us will keep us. And he, he, it's like I said, it's, it's him, Jesus that does the work in us. So he will get us through. Um, but there's still hope. There's still hope. But guys, I think that's all I got. I wanted just to do this quickly. Uh, it's only an hour and 12 minutes. So I, I think I did good. Um, uh, I'd be said, I, uh, pray for me, give me strength, pray for me, give me strength to, uh, to, to make me do more videos, uh, because I just, I like to do these with you guys. It's just, I, I sit by myself and I'm like, ah, uh, you know, uh, they don't need to hear it. They've already heard it or, but then I'm like, no, you know, people need to be edified. People need to see, people need to stay in the word. People need to be showed, you know, you know, uh, good ways to also study. So. Uh, if 
and God gave, he gives us all gifts, right? So, um, you know, we just got to use them and just do it for it's, it's, it's for him. So that being said, uh, thank you guys for everything, for showing up tonight and for all your chat. Love you guys. Um, I'm glad to, to be back. So uh, I will hopefully see you in the next one. I'm going to try to do it in a few days. I'm not going to go a month. I'm, pray for me that it'll go another month. Uh, but uh, y'all have a wonderful night, all right? Take care, Mr. Bond, Diane, Kevin, everybody. Good night, brothers.